Welcome back to the Tide Deer. I'm here. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for November 27th, 2022, 2022. We've got some interesting news today in Transformers and some reissues from Magic Square. McFarlane's showing a slew of some teasers for some really cool stuff, and it sort of appeals to me, and I'll explain to you exactly why. Went on a road trip. I've got a lot of pictures for the Transformers stuff that's out there, the Masters of the Universe stuff that's out there, and it's going to be peppered in throughout the news but yeah there's stuff out there and there's stuff still lingering and lots of star wars news that's more or less what is showing up and what is on sale and what's going to be a really really good sell coming up we'll talk about this some more coming up all right so starting out with what's new at show z we have yet another version of the new age h45f Firefox, Jetfire, and so this does look pretty good. It looks just like the original one. I really don't know what's different. No, there's an EX version, and then there's one that looks like the vintage Jetfire, and there's a clear one, all kinds of different colors and stuff, but, you know, it's another excuse to put it out again, or slightly different, slightly changed. I think they all look really good. That is up for pre-order, $1 down, no price just yet. They also have more pre-orders up for the Fans Toys FD54 Power Glide, or the Warthog, and looks pretty cool. Of course, this one's three dollars down, which isn't bad for Fan Toys one, Mini Bot, and all that kind of stuff. Does look pretty good, and still not exactly sure when this one's coming in, but we will see in just a minute. We're about to get their jazz. They also have something called the Ernest Corecraft RB 13V Robot Build Valhallian Valhallian for ninety six dollars. It is six inches tall. Main figure, four pairs of exchangeable hands, connector parts, two magnetic shields, two electric stickers, and two. Blitz Cantanas. In addition to the robot form, it has two different modes, a Wavern and Raptor. And so with that, it doesn't show any pictures of it transformed, but I thought it was kind of cool to show. So fans always put out a video coming soon for their jive, which is their take on a very G1-esque jazz. And it does look pretty good. So one of the things it does kind of get me thinking, like why are they putting these videos out? Uh, maybe because they want to promote something that we already have two or three of on our shelf, and so maybe they're having trouble moving product, I don't know. But with that, I think it's cool they're doing it, and I like that they're doing it. Maybe they're just growing so big that they're starting to do these kinds of things to promote their products, I don't know. But I think it's really cool, and each one of these videos I do gets a little bit better. It's a little bit more interesting. But then it's one of those, are you going to swap out? Are you going to get this guy? I mean, it does look great. It does kind of fit the bill. If you're a super hyper tuned, it'd work. If you like a little bit of real world aspect with that metallic paint that's on it that would work too but i i'm shocked like they just announced this what earlier this year or maybe late last year it doesn't seem like they've been out that announced that long ago and they're already out and there's other projects that are five years old they're still working on so they moved very fast on these it shows that they've probably been developing it for a while but yeah it does look pretty cool i'm pretty excited looking forward to it of course you know i've got a couple others to compare it to so we got a couple of pictures it's really just the box and this and i think this is the most important picture here kind of showing the difference between the mainline release of the tempo the uh r whatever the, the number 11 high fidelity diecast tempo this is their take on steel jaw and one of the things i just really think that the exclusive the sccc exclusive one has more vibrant colors in this it's kind of muted looking maybe it's just a picture but i kind of felt like that from the promo pics also but this sort of does say these are a little bit more drab colors and the other ones were more vibrant in a way so it'd be interesting to see people that have in hand side by side pictures of them but i think the SCCC one's better i'm interested also to see what the big price difference is between these and all that kind of stuff at all the different places but uh pretty exciting and i'm glad they're going forward with these cassettes okay so king's always is showing their next limb with this combiner set this is uh huger hino or huge rhino whatever you want to call it <laughs> huge rhino H huger hino huge rhino so it does look pretty good now i did get to take a look at one of these and so i feel like the joints are really tight on these and they do look pretty cool and it's really interesting too because like the major body parts seem very smooth in design uh the ones that make it like the foot and that kind of stuff the a little bit more jagged edges but still a really cool design overall and really i actually think if they do a repaint they could make this look a lot more like the original g1 like super ultra g1ers will probably get a kick out of a repaint on this uh here it is looking like this the paint is phenomenal it is very impressive it's not really high gloss 
but it does look good. It has a bit of a reflection to it, but I was surprised because there's so many pieces to this. It's like a lot of components to it and almost all of it's painted. So it does look very impressive in person. So really awesome. Also, uh, don't forget what it's going to look like when you combine it, which is not bad. It looks really cool. So uh, quite a bit of stylized detail to it, but a lot of people really look forward to that and finishing this set. Prime Metal Studios is showing off more of their statues. This one is a Power Master Optimus Prime, so it's pretty impressive. Again, a lot of detail on these, a little bit of a stylized representation to it, but big and expensive. I've, I've seen some of these pictures are impressive how big they are, but they didn't just show off an Optimus Prime. They also showed off a Beast Wars Transmetal 2 Megatron, which looks great too. And this just looks so much different. It's a lot more organic looking than what we saw in the cartoon or what we've seen with any of the third parties out there. So uh, definitely a different style. If you're into this, then it's quite impressive and will make an impressive display piece. They also showed off their Jetwing Optimus Prime, which does look just like what you'd expect with a Jetwing Optimus Prime and lots of detail, lots of shiny paint on this guy. And so with that, it matches the movie very well so they don't have to take too much of a stylized approach to it because it already has so much going on with the movie version cdl is making a clear version of rc and she's starting to show up different places shows you in other places if you're interested in getting her now there's not going to be a lot of places to get it from shows is one of those but it's interesting with this clear stuff because it's clear and very very thin points on this figure so it could be a little scary, gotta be real careful with this one, but I can attest to the standard one, feels very solid. So we got to see at this last event, I don't remember which one, uh, some of the Super 7 Ultimates Transformers Wave 2, and it does look good. I have to admit, these do look pretty good, especially the Grimlock in Dino Mode, and now he's not going to be big enough for a Masterpiece shelf, he's probably right on for a Chug shelf. And the rest of them are a little bit too big for a chuck shelf, probably. But anyway, for the price point, $55, you get a little wheelie. Uh, maybe it looks wheelie good. So you got a bunch of accessories like they always do. Then we have the tracks. And now we've seen these, but we've seen them in renders. This is the real figure in the real world. And does it look better to you than it did in renders? So it just depends. Now I've got two of these on pre-order, and it's the next two that I'm going to show. But I think Trax does look pretty interesting. The Takara one I don't think is that bad. I'm one of the few people that still like the Takara version and don't really think we need a new Masterpiece version. Here we go with Bludgeon. And yeah, he does look like the Pretender, like a better version of the G1 Pretender. Now the G1 Pretender is like a $300 figure complete. So good luck getting his hat, helmet, or whatever, and all that kind of stuff for the G1 one. But uh, getting one of these for 55 bucks. You can stand it in in your G1 collection and save $300, I guess. But uh, there's not going to be anything inside with the Pretender kind of thing. So I think that's the whole way we're going, the direction we're going. We're going to get Pretenders made, but they're not going to operate the same way. And then uh, Megatron, you you got to get it. So I had to pre-order Megatron and I pre-ordered Bludgeon. And you got to have Megatron Optimus Prime if you're going to be collecting these at all. So I'm sure they're going to come up with three, four different ways to put Megatron Optimus Prime out. Uh, like they always do, and there's going to be a clear one, and there's going to be some other stuff going on, uh, transformation, all that kind of stuff. But anyhow, uh, you did get a Crimson Z, and you get his mace, and all that kind of stuff. All right, so getting into some Legends news. Magic Square is doing a bunch of reissues. They're reissuing their Soundwave. Now, I'm not exactly sure what color it's going to be. Is it going to be a darker blue, the lighter blue, all that kind of stuff? I am interested in a metallic repaint that's better than the first metallic repaint they did, and I would be all over that I, that's what i would want i do have the kind of the standard more tune accurate version which i'm happy with but i've been sitting on the sidelines hoping that they do a metallic version one also they said that the fans wanted more of this guy so they want reflector and they're going to put out i think the tune version and the toy version because they have pictures of this tune version and then they have pictures of this toy version so all that is really cool magic square reissuing stuff so i'm glad they're getting out in front of it and actually telling us about this now i think you can pre-order on their site now the thing that gets me is i don't see pre-orders at anywhere else like shows or any of those for these just yet so i don't know if this is going to be yet to go straight through the magic squares page some people were telling me that magic square is trying to shift to direct to consumer more than selling through distributors but i don't think they're going to do that a hundred percent i think it's just kind of a side deal they're working on but Anyhow, you have to go to magicsquaretoys.com 
uh, to pre-order some of these. And some of these still aren't up for pre-order yet. But they also said they're going to do their Cosmos, which is pretty good Cosmos overall. So just giving you a heads up on this. Speaking of Magic Square, so their Skyfire or Jetfire version is getting closer to getting released, I guess. Because we've got these pictures they put out and they look fantastic. Uh, it, this one is stockier and beefier and oddly shorter than what we're getting with New Age. And I think that it does look fantastic though. And they do, if you notice, the angles are not never straight on. They're a little bit from the side to, I guess, give them a thinner look. I guess he took some notes from Instagram models on how you're supposed to pose. And so uh, there he is, so much some articulation. Speaking of notes from Instagram models how to pose, here's a Gerwalk mode. And so with that, that looks pretty cool. Uh, I guess if you like the Gerwalk, I personally do not like the Gerwalk, but I know a lot of people do, so I'll never be displaying them like this. And opening canopies, which look great. So um, I'm pretty sure that's exactly the way the New Age ones work also. Be kind of fun to get both of them in hand and see which one's better. Speaking of New Age and which one's better, <laughs> uh, looking at this, you see the New Age right here in clear. And so we're seeing a lot of stuff done in clear. They're just going to put it out in any way, shape, or form they can, which is fine with me. More options, more availability, and all that kind of stuff. They call this the H45T of their Firefox, and here it is, standing there looking pretty cool, with a clear weapon too, so if you're going to make them clear, you better give them a clear weapon. And that looks good. Uh, his thrusters, I don't know if they were clear or just smoke. You see his thrusters through his leg. I don't know how many people were in on that Fans Toys Phoenix clear one that was called, they called it Soft but I'm curious how many people are in on this. I kind of like it when people put pictures up like this with new age and cases of their product that is shipping out. So they're, they're doing, their shipping uh, looks like several different versions of their Ultra Magnus and it is the City Commander Octavian. And yeah, it does look pretty good. And here is Legendary Heroes, the EX28EX. Anyway. Pretty cool stuff, just kind of like to show this kind of stuff off. I, I really do like it when they show this kind of stuff off, and it's kind of fun. All right, so in other Legends news, we do have Zeta Toys putting out their Legends Scale Superion pre-orders, and so it's 170 at Show Z. And so with that, it does look like a very nice set. Now, I'm starting to look at this and thinking, okay, well, I've seen Minosaurs that go for like 250 and stuff like that, so this doesn't seem like that bad of a price for 170 from the set and it does look pretty good and they know how to make a combiner already like that's really i would say all that zeta does nowadays is make a combiner and they make a combiner well here are the alt modes which i think do look better than their masterpiece versions and why do i say that because they have to make new molds anyway so they can tweak the original mold these in some cases are completely different it will be interesting to see what's similar to the the masterpiece and what's different but these do look better all around almost wishing they would take what they've learned here and make another masterpiece but i don't want to spend that much money but anyway they look fantastic 170 i think is worth it if you break it down per figure that makes it 34 dollars a figure so not really all that bad all right so i want to start out the mainline stuff talking about kind of what's showing up right here and i haven't seen this yet myself but they're saying in canada this is the Galaxy Shuttle in for the Velostron 500 collection. So these should be showing up at your Walmarts pretty soon. Then there's some Earth Spark stuff if you're into that. This is probably what it's going to look like. You're going to walk in and see a whole display of Earth Spark. They're going to push it really hard because, of course, toys are for kids, sort of, right? Here's kind of what the U.S. shells are starting to look like. Just some stuff showing up random. Really not much to get excited about. The 86RC starting to show up. The Buzzworthy Bumblebee four pack which i think that's the one that has uh, it's hard to see i, I see the corner of it but that's what i think it has that insecticon that deluxe insecticon in it. and then of course we've got the pterosaur and that a lot of good stuff a lot of good stuff right so i sat on my little road trip of an adventure and i found a sludge and oddly enough at the exact same place i found this sludge there was a good one but somebody had opened a box up they ripped it open so they could see what's going on inside i guess so I'm not surprised at all. I'm not shocked. I mean, what, what do you expect? You can't even see the figure. So anyhow, uh, yeah, somebody just ripped that open. And, you know, that's not for me. I like to keep my stuff in the package, keep it looking good. Now I'm starting to be curious. Do, should I open mine and make sure that the figure's in there? 
And if you're looking for these figures, check out your Ross, $10. I passed on a couple of these and definitely passed on the pipes, but for 10 bucks, I thought it's worth picking them up. So uh, this is what's kind of the current wave going on at Ross, discounters and that kind of stuff right now. And pretty good deal. I say $10 is exactly what these should be priced at. So more stuff in the main line. We get pictures of Studio Series Voyager, Battle Trap, and Deluxe Air Razor. We've already sort of seen the Air Razor pictures before, but it does look much different than what we just saw in that last picture. Here's a picture of, of the Battle Trap alt mode, and truthfully, I, I really even don't even know who Battle Trap is, so I am I might have missed it somewhere along the way, but anyhow, there it is. Does look kind of cool, pretty interesting, nice little sort of tow truck kind of thing going on. Although we had pictures last week of Air Razor and more similar to this, this picture is a little bit better. You can see the size difference between the two, not just the style difference, the aesthetic difference and the color difference, but the size difference. So the other one's significantly taller, so a little bit thinner too. So depends on your taste and preference, what you'd like. Hey, here they are for birds in their bird mode. So also with that, it seems to have a little bit longer wingspan, probably, maybe, sort of, maybe overall just a little bit bigger. But I still, I still really like the one they already made. Okay, so we are seeing the movie version of the retro series of Hot Rod. And I've heard a lot of people talk about this, comments and stuff like that. I actually think it does look pretty good. I'm just surprised they're remaking it. But I guess I shouldn't be, because they already have the mold, they've already put it out, and they know we're just going to buy it, or some of us will buy it. So uh, putting it next to the Optimus Prime, that's probably the retro series Optimus Prime that they already had. So it looks good. It's a color variation that we've never seen before, and it does match the movie a lot better. And back in the 80s, you know, the toys really didn't match the media all that well, and so now we can have an 80s toy that matches the media just a little bit better. Although the color is different, it's more of a, what is it, a mauve color than red, and so with that, that's really the main difference. Overall, I still think that the auto mode, the alt mode, isn't really that big of a difference. It's it's the big difference, the big changes really affect the bot mode. All right, so Tuesday they're supposed to be having some sort of a Hasbro Pulse fan stream talking about Deathsaurus, and there's supposed to be some big news for Deathsaurus backers. Now, I'm going to tell you, I didn't back this. I probably will kind of see what's going on with it and all that kind of stuff. Pretty interesting. I think it's a great project, and for 180 bucks. It's pretty much on par with what you would expect to have to counter your Victory Leo and display next to your Victory Leo and all that kind of stuff. So it's par for the course. Good thing they're giving the good and the bad with this set. And to get this, it looks fantastic. It looks phenomenal. And I'm wondering, what's the big news? Is the big news that it's funded by them? Because it's pretty darn close. So I figured I'd show this. It is a segue, Bumblebee go-kart pro limited edition for twenty three hundred dollars so if you have twenty three hundred bucks to spend and you want to drive 17 miles an hour <laughs> maybe 23 miles an hour if you want uh then you can get this go-kart it's pretty cool 1700 or i'm sorry not 1700 2300 is a bit pricey for something like this but this is a specialty novelty item with that it's not they don't plan to make that many there's probably not going to be a whole lot available and if you miss this go around i bet you you'll just have to pay out the nose on secondary market for it so i'm a little curious though like what would be the life cycle of the batteries what type of batteries they use all that kind of stuff because i don't have a segue i don't really mess with all that kind of stuff but uh if you're into it you might want to look into all the battery life and all that kind of stuff so what else is going on out there there's master of the universe news now i had this picture weeks ago and i I actually just forgot to talk about it and forgot to put it in my news. So this week, there's not much Mo2 going on, but I did want to show at Ollie's 20 bucks for these. Now, these are ones that you've seen come and go on clearance like Battle Cats and Panthors and stuff, but I don't. I personally never saw the Wind Raider on clearance. I heard people say they saw their Wind Raiders for like $7. Like I would have jumped on that, but I never saw it anywhere for $7. But it's strange because it's like they're putting them almost back to normal price. Doesn't isn't the whole reason Ollie's exist is to get stuff cheap and sell it cheap, but not sell it for almost normal price. So all these are 20 bucks, but that sounds like a good price on the wind Raider. It's not really that great a price on battle cat because he was originally 25 and I got a few extras clear stuff at seven. 
at seven. And so with this, it doesn't look like anything sold for three weeks. Also have this picture that I picked up the other day on my road trip. I, I always start at my closest target because every time I go on a road trip, they get something I'm looking for. And so they got the Wave 2 in. Now, here's the thing. I never officially heard they were going to do a Wave 2 reissue. And this was a shock to me to walk into Target and see this there. And so I was pretty excited to get a couple of extras because I am still working on my Eternia display and all that kind of stuff. So this was very helpful. But then I did my whole road trip. When I got back, they were gone. So these sold pretty fast. And I'm not surprised. And so I'm wondering, are they going to restock this? They already got rid of the display box. And so with that, I'm guessing it was one and done. So check your targets. And if it's there, it won't be there long. Super 7 has got a Conan they're putting out. And it's their Ultimates. It's Wave 4. Here's the thing about it. The figure is the normal $55 price point. It's the old man Conan at the very end of the movie where he heavy is the head that wears a crown kind of scene that's going on and you have to buy his throne separately it's nice that they make them they give you options and you could probably just put them on a block of wood if you choose to but you could pay 45 bucks for the separate throne if you want to go that route uh, it's better than them just forcing you to buy it as a hundred dollar set but it is of course just like like a six buck piece of plastic with some paint on it that they're going to charge you 45 dollars for overall but it looks very good. They really did capture Arnold in there, older version of Arnold in there, and I think they did a great job with it. We've got Nightfall Catwoman for, this is the good old Todd McFarlane line. This looks like it's going to be pretty good with this one here, this Catwoman, Nightfall. But there's also something else that he's making that seems pretty cool. He's teasing this. These are all teaser pictures. A Mr. Freeze. Now, I think it looks pretty good from here, and it's going to be not 100% reminiscent of like a Kenner-style one, but for me personally, I think it'll be great because I do kind of want a Kenner-style. I do kind of want it to match the Kenner, and there's different I don't know, recipes out there to put yourself together a Kenner-style display with modern stuff, and so I think this might fit that. So this is something that Super 7 is also making Notorious B.I.G. Ultimates action figure, which is a very big surprise that just out of the blue, here he is. And so with that, he's going to be, I believe he's still the $55 price point. It doesn't actually, yep, there it is. Pre-order it, $55. He does come with a slew of accessories and all that kind of stuff like you would expect with them. And so I think it looks good. I think they've done a pretty good job with it. And you got three different head sculpts, the sunglass shades, the chain, all the different heads, the cane. The microphone, a wine glass, nice touch. So anyway, pretty cool that they're getting into this. I'm curious how many different real life people they're going to be making. Now we get into Mafex and their Terminator 2. This is the T800 teaser image. So this is like a week of teasers. There's not, not a lot of whole real news, but Mafex, you're pretty sure it's going to be around $100 or so. And it's going to look pretty good. And I'm wondering... Is there some level of soft good to it, like that jacket and all that? So, I mean, I'm trying to look kind of close, probably not. But it does look really good overall, and I'm looking forward to better pictures of this. But I don't know if I'm in the $100 per action figure game, unless it's super ultra, like, obscure. And you know no one else is going to make it. But, yeah, there's a lot of Terminators out there already, right? Getting into some Star Wars news. Headline Star Wars news. The Cyber Monday deals... They've already started, and I was looking at this thinking, okay, yeah, Monday I'm going to get a Dingar, but Dingar at $8.99, that's really good. I mean, there was a time Dingar was like $89.99 because they needed a reissue them. Now they've reissued them in Dingar and the Emperor for $9.99. Very, very impressively cheap. That's crazy. So uh, also you get like a George Lucas Stormtrooper for $16.99, Cad Bane, $18.99, and then, then the other one, and I don't know if I see it here, but it's Bosk, and I'll probably link it down below. There's the Bosk and the IG-88 Retro 2-Pack now is like $18.99. So it's almost $10 cheaper. So lots of deals to be had during the Cyber Monday coming up. All right, so a lot of stuff is going to start shipping. The Amazon exclusive uh, Mando Ahsoka cash grab. I mean, uh, and Grogu Cyber Cell. <laughs> Cyber Monday Cell. This one's now going to be $45. And I think it's in stock. So that one does look like a set that's a cash grab. But for $45, it's not so bad. 
There's the Deluxe Black Series Ned B starting to show up at Targets. So I've seen a lot of stuff showing up at Targets for Star Wars. And some stuff actually sells well, some just warms the pegs very, very well. But uh, I'm curious about this guy. So this one was in the Kenobi series, and it's a cool-looking droid. And I like droids, but it seems like droids don't sell as well as you'd think they would. But, hey, it's pretty cool. Looks like the Holiday Walmart exclusive Scout Trooper is up for pre-order again with the sweater. I did get the Boba Fett one that has the Boba Fett ugly Christmas sweater on it. So that's pretty cool. I like that one. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in on all of these, but uh, this one's a Walmart exclusive. I haven't seen it at Walmart, and I think you're probably only gonna be able to get it if you pre-order it. Maybe they'll have one case show up, but this stuff's kind of cool. I kind of hated this when they first started doing it, but people love it, and it, it is kind of fun. Bouncing back and forth from Target to Walmart, and back to Target. Okay, so Target has these Black Series Obi-Wans from the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, the Tibidon Station. Not a movie, TV series. Anyhow, they're not $84.99 each. That's that droid behind it. But uh, still kind of cool black series. If you're in on this, then go for it. I'm, I'm not really buying anything from Obi wan unless that, except for that droid. And I'm definitely not buying anything from Andor, even though I'm kind of enjoying Andor. And giving credit where credit is due, uh, the credit collection, Ahsoka Tano. And so I saw this at GameStop. Um, I'm guessing that this is like a Walmart or something. So I'm not sure if Credit Collection is available everywhere or because I I can't keep up with it. I don't have like a, a plot point map to plot this stuff out. But I saw it at GameStop and I think she looks okay. She looks fine. But I'm not a big fan of all these different side things they're doing like Credit Collection for $30 or almost $30. It's just... It gets frustrating. I do like the packaging, and I would would like it if it was a more affordable price. Like maybe the twenty two ninety nine price point, I probably would have got it. But twenty seven, twenty eight, no, I'm not in on it. And then I don't have the other eleven they've already made or fifteen. I don't even know how many. So it's it's kind of one of those things where this is where Star Wars starts losing people doing too much that doesn't really make sense. Holiday weeks are historically light weeks for news, but there's still always a lot going on. Stuff showing up more reveals and more reissues let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review what else is going on out there that i missed and didn't talk about that's really cool because i like to stay in the know like and subscribe and type here hanger out